sometimes licensed game tie-ins can be great, like, uh, uh, there was, oh, Rockstar's game based on 70s cult movie The Warriors, and... Batman. Batman, right, thank you. Most of the time, however, video game adaptations of TV shows, movies and books are dreadful to the point where they erase any residual affection you had for the original thing in the first place. Here are six adaptations we'd like to see and the studios we think should make them. Woodhouse, this is Miami. Don't you have any cooler clothes? No, sir. Not anymore. And your shoes. Because how hard is it to poach a goddamn egg properly? In Sterling Archer, Adam Reed created one of television's classic assholes. He's sort of an American answer to James Bond. An egotistical, self-centered, constantly drunk secret agent whose personal priorities usually rank higher than the mission objectives. Just shut up and get the plans. You shut up and get the plans. What? I mean, give me, me those plans now. Yes, technically it's a comedy, but just look at these 60s spy movie inspired action sequences. Fighting on top of a train, racing in the Monaco Grand Prix, fan boats. That amount of variety in playstyles, combined with a sense of humour that is extremely crass but somehow remains charming, we reckon Saints Row developer's Volition would be a shoo-in. Saints Row III already demonstrates that Volition can juggle a large open world, a load of vehicles and imaginative weaponry. So layer on that pseudo-60s technology, some cel-shaded visuals and add the vocal and writing talents of the TV show's team and you'd have a contender for most entertaining game ever. If you've ever played ancient PC shooter No One Lives Forever, you have some idea of just how much potential there is there. Besides, what was the last half-decent secret agent game we had? Alpha Protocol? Please. The 12 districts of Pan Am shall offer up in tribute one young man and woman between the ages of 12 and 18 to be trained in the art of survival and to be prepared to fight to the death. There's no denying The Hunger Games is huge, both in bookshops and in the cinema. That makes it all the stranger that we've not heard anything about an Xbox game based on the dystopian tween-age fiction. Even the film's distributor thinks it's a no-brainer. But barring a news story or two, nearly a year ago we've heard nothing about such a game set on the surprisingly popular premise of televised child-on-child -child murder. What we have had is Tomb Raider, featuring a lot of similar themes, including a strong female lead, a survivalist tone, and of course, bows and arrows. We think Crystal Dynamics could recreate The Hunger Games with ease, and as one of last year's highest grossing films, it could potentially be even more popular than Lara herself. In fact, they could probably just find and replace all instances of Lara Croft in the game design doc to Katniss Everdeen, license Jennifer Lawrence's likeness, and job done. You can locate the president by his vital signs bracelet on his wrist. Sends off a sync pulse. Use this homing device. Shows direction and distance. Escape from New York, John Carpenter's 1981 sci-fi action film, is already hugely influential in the world of video games. If Hideo Kojima could get away with it, he'd probably name all of his characters Snake Plissken, give them an eye patch, and make them look suspiciously like Kurt Russell. But it's never been given a proper video game adaptation, and we think Rocksteady, the studio behind the Batman Arkham games, would be the guys to do it. The plot of Escape from New York is already pretty video gamey. In the far-off future year of 1997, Manhattan's been turned into a prison island, the President of the United States has been kidnapped, and it's up to a lone hero to rescue him. The hero, Snake, is also injected with a time-delayed poison, giving him just 24 hours to complete his mission before his heart explodes like a fleshy grenade. Rocksteady has already proven themselves to be the guys to go to for the ever-popular prison city genre, but their mastery of free-flowing combat and gripping storylines make them the ideal candidates here. We're thinking basically Arkham City with guns and a time limit. 24 hours to find the president, multiple paths, and a chance to replay dozens of different ways. Add a John Carpenter score and Kurt Russell voice work, and you've got a guaranteed Game of the Year contender. Special edition can come with an eye patch. Is someone writing this down? It's a survival of the human race, Pliskin. Something you don't give a shit about. Here's the pitch. A survival horror game based on the old-timey sci-fi scares of H.P. Lovecraft, made by Visceral, the studio behind the Dead Space series. It's been years since we've had a great game set in the pulpy horror of old HP. 2005's Call of Cthulhu Dark Corners of the Earth springs to mind. And though there are more recent games that draw on Lovecraftian traditions, such as the pant-wettingly scary Amnesia The Dark Descent... Looks like we can go through this door then. Oh my God! I'm ready for a straight-up Lovecraft horror game. Like Dark Corners of the Earth, it could have a sanity system working the Lovecraft theme of horror so intense it drives you properly mad. The Dead Space series has ably dealt with induced madness before, courtesy of the alien markers, so I'm confident they could give the Elder Gods a go. In fact, so much of Dead Space borrows from Lovecraft's cosmic horror, it feels like they practically owe him a game out of it. The 
most convenient thing for Visceral would be how much of the environment art from Dead Space 3 they could reuse in the levels based on At the Mountains of Madness, which is Lovecraft's tale of ancient alien horrors in an Antarctic mountain range. Sound familiar? Just just man. Nice. The crank film star Jason Statham is the improbably named Chev Chelios, who is um, a hitman or something, maybe? Anyway, he spends the crank films either poisoned or missing his heart, and he has to keep doing things to keep his adrenaline level up or electrocuting himself to stop himself dying while he finds a cure. The films themselves are already basically video games, with Chev recharging his health every five seconds, fighting bosses, and an unlockable big head mode. So an adaptation would hopefully be pretty straightforward, but we reckon Rockstar would be the guys for the job. Not so much based on the Grand Theft Auto series, although the number of fucks that that series gives is coincidentally the same number given by the Crank series, more on their adaptation of cult 70s gang movie The Warriors, which was full of the kind of comic book styling and ludicrous action set pieces that a Crank adaptation would need to really be faithful to the ridiculous originals. Who the hell are these dudes? I don't want to find out. Think the Warriors with GTA's driving an open world, Max Payne's bullet time gunplay, and a constantly dwindling adrenaline slash charge meter that you need to keep topped up, and you're there. Get Jason Statham in too, he can't be up to much these days. Really? Alright, Danny Dyer then, whoever. Hugh Howey's phenomenally successful book, Wool, which debuted as a series of self-published e-books, is just the kind of grim dystopian sci-fi we love. Almost everybody's dead, the survivors are buried deep underground, and a brisk walk outside will strip the skin from your bones. We promise we're not sociopaths. At the beginning of the book, you join the remaining dregs of humanity after an unspecified apocalyptic event. There are hundreds of them, all huddled together in a giant underground silo, desperately trying to get along, either until the noxious atmosphere outside becomes breathable, or someone uses the last of the good toilet paper and everyone flips out. There's only one studio that does isolated societies on the brink of collapse well enough to do justice to wool, and that's Bioshock developer Irrational Games. There are obvious similarities between Rapture's sealed underwater city and Wool's subterranean silo, but we're also thinking a dash of Bioshock Infinite's social unease and a cherry-picked selection of System Shock 2's RPG elements would combine to recreate the book's unique atmosphere. What's more, Wool's plot twists and turns, and after that moment in Bioshock, we're confident Irrational could ensure that those moments have the same impact they do in the books. So those are six adaptations that we believe almost certainly wouldn't be terrible. If you've got a licensed developer combo that you'd love to see get made, tell us in the comments and we'll see you next time on Outside Xbox.